Okay, so sorry, I had a phone call coming in because I had to make these videos using my phone. Anyway, um, so basically I've taken the bumper off and the reason you want to take the bumper off is because you, you need access to uh, some of the key areas that will allow to lower the engine on one side so you ha can have access from the top. And to take the bumper off, it's, um, you have three screws um, at the top um, that go into these holes, sorry. One, uh, two, and the third one there. And there's uh, one on each um, end point of the, uh, the front fender. So it goes in there. So if you follow the arch, and that's where one of the screw goes. And it's the same on the other side as well. Okay, so once you've taken those out, um, there's two additional screws, which is basically um, just on this metal thing, literally at the bottom of the uh, um, the bumper, and they connect here. And these were the most difficult screws to take out. This one came out after, because I don't like to apply too much force, I, I was had to use a lot of um, WD-40 and some of the chemicals just to losing the uh, the bolt. It was uh, very difficult, but I got it out. And um, also, they, they catch a lot of rust because they're so close to the ground. Once the paint and um, the protection wears off, it just starts rusting. So it was pretty much seized. This one was almost impossible to take out, so I had to literally cut that. Um, the top ones were not too difficult. However, uh, over time, the, the screws weren't in great shape, so I still had to take a lot of care. So once the bumper came out, what I did was I've taken the um, this cross arm out, and uh, and that basically um, is something that you have to take out in order to lower the engine from one side. And this is based on some of the notes and stuff I've learned from the internet. And uh, this is one of the methods. This is not the proper smart method because the proper one would require these special bolts that you have to apply. I thought that this was this method was quite easy, um, not too difficult. And so this arm basically connects. You have uh, a bolt here and a bolt uh, at the top, um, uh, just behind there. Once you take that out, this side is uh, released and the tire actually falls down a little bit. Um, the same thing on the other side. Uh, one bolt in there, one bolt at the top, again mounting at the back of the wheel, um, just there, uh, where the top hole is. Okay, so once you take this out, basically there's only one more step left before the engine uh, 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 is lowered on one side and you get the space. And that's by looking at these engine mounts. So um, this is the engine mount, and there's two bolts in there. When I loosen that, the the whole engine will literally sink to one side. There's still two engine support mounts, and uh, so it's okay. The, the advantage with this method is that you don't have to disconnect any of the piping and make room at the front. So this is kind of like uh, uh, an easy way to get about a significant amount of space so that you can get to the starter motor. So this is the method I'm using because um, I think the other method requires a lot more work. Um, and also, because I've never done this before, um, I don't know, I can't really compare whether the other one is better than this, but uh, from what I've read, it sounds like this is the easiest one. Uh, so all these bolts, once they're in play, so once they're taken out, the crossbow, uh, cross arm comes out quite easily. And uh, at that point, you're ready to basically at that point you're ready to actually start taking all this out to get to the starter motor. So I'm going to record uh, further notes once I start dismantling this part and um, and I'll take it from there. Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, I'll catch up again. Thank you.